Let's get to Phil LeBeau with JetBlue's CEO, Robin Hayes. Phil. Thank you, Tyler. Robin, thanks for joining us today. Uh, let's get to the main point. I, I, yes, you had a loss in the first quarter, but I think it's the second quarter guidance that people are focused on. Uh, you're forecasting a profitable second quarter. What's the setup from your perspective when you look at the spring and then heading into the summer travel season? No, hi, uh, Phil. Uh, good, good to see you again. Yes, uh, you know, Q1 uh, was a loss. It's uh, usually our uh, weakest quarter. We actually did better than we had uh, originally guided, so we were we were pleased with that and a great effort by the uh, JetBlue team. As we come into quarter two, what we're seeing is still very strong demand. International is extremely strong. Uh, domestic is strong. And, um, you know, that's comping, uh, comparing to some uh, pretty tough uh, comps last year because if you think about this time last year, that's when we really started to uh, see that the demand for travel start to surge. So I think feel really good going into the peak. Uh, a combination of uh, strong demand, uh, lower fuel than we saw in Q1, uh, and also keeping our costs in check, uh, I think will give us a good setup for the second quarter. But your guidance in terms of revenue for the second quarter uh, coming in just a smidge below where the analysts are expecting it to be. And you mentioned during the analyst call that you're seeing some headwinds out there, in particular uh, the FAA constraints, uh, the travel restrictions uh, that you guys are putting in place uh, with regard to flights into New York City. How much is that going to potentially uh, be a headwind in the second quarter into the third quarter? Well, it, it is a headwind, Phil. I mean, uh, New York is, uh, we have a significant amount of capacity that is in, our, in and out of New York. It's our largest uh, market that we fly to. Uh, and the FAA has, uh, has told us and uh, other airlines that they are far from fully staffed. In, in fact, in the New York uh, area air traffic control facility, there are about 54 percent, 54 percent of their staffing requirement. And by the way, Phil, that's based on a 2014 number. So if we think about how much, the, uh, how much uh, air traffic has grown since 2014, uh, and so what we uh, did was we have reluctantly decided to reduce flights in and out of New York uh, this summer. By doing that, it's going to make uh, the uh, service more operable. If we didn't do this, the FAA had told us that delays would uh, nearly double in the New York area. And for those uh, of uh, you who fly in and out of New York, you know, you know it's already can be very challenging. And so we wanted to do what we could as JetBlue uh, to, to offset and try to mitigate uh, the impact of a shortage of uh, air traffic controllers. Robin, it's Kelly here, and I just want to jump in and kind of bring it back to the spirit deal because, and I'm thinking about this in, in light of uh, President Biden's announcement of his uh, run for re-election and that sort of thing. I mean, it, it's pretty clear the administration and, and the, these agencies have no interest in a lot of deals happening, kind of period. Um, why not just walk away? I mean, how far are you willing to take this? How expensive a fight could that be? Are you going to be kind of hung up and hamstring with this for a long time? And if did you know going into it, hey, it's just going to be nearly impossible to get anything done, but it's that important to us? Or do you think it's become more clear in the ensuing months that it's just going to be really hard to get these things done? Well, I think it's important and hard. So important because, again, we've just talked about the challenges uh, in the Northeast because of uh, the uh, shortage of air traffic controllers. And so for JetBlue, that means we, we need to diversify. We need to bring the JetBlue product, the JetBlue experience, the JetBlue low fares to more customers across the country. And so that's what uh, our merger with Spirit uh, will do. It will create a true high quality, low fare challenger to the big four. The issue in the US, we have four large airlines that control 80% of the market. The rest of us have 20% between us. You know, how come the number six, how can the number six and number seven player become in the number five player uh, with everything that JetBlue stands for uh, be anti-consumer? It's not, it's very pro-competitive. Um, so we are now in the hands of uh, a judge. You know, we have a, a court scheduled, um, we have a, a, a court case scheduled in October. We're gonna make our case. We feel really good uh, about our case. And uh, the timeline is really progressing as we expected. In fact, when we announced the agreement with Spirit last year to, to merge, um, we said we expected to close in the first half of 2024, and that is indeed still the case.